I realized in preparation for this video that I hadn't shown you guys an overview of fixed limit betting, which is of course paramount for optimal and professional seven stud play. And that's where I would like to begin this video. And as we proceed then, I will use a, an actual concrete example from the seven stud high session recording that you guys saw as a means to illustrate exactly how you can use the calculators I've created for you guys in play and also for your analyses of your live hands after you get back to the house. So I think the best way to go about this is to initially show you guys a bet sizing calculator for Texas Hold'em fixed limit and then move into seven stud afterwards. Uh, it's just because most of you will be more familiar with this format than you will uh, will be for seven stud and it'll just make more sense. The principles are the same uh, but there are a few differences so most important thing here is to definitely review the videos on bet sizing uh, and bet types and moves and pop manipulation that we've covered previously and for those of you who have not seen those uh, videos, especially for No Limit and Pot Limit Play, I will briefly review uh, what the different categories are here. We've got, as you see here, Hold'em Fixed Limit, Break Even Equity, and Fold Equity. Break Even Equity is simply put the amount of equity you need on any given call, as an example, in order to call all in and then break even approaching infinity. The fold equity is the probability you need that your opponents fold when you're making a move as a pure bluff in order to break even approaching infinity again in the long run. Yeah, okay, and what we've got here is antis now since we're playing fixed limit. That's uh, very often going to be the case. You can enter that here or take it out as you like. Um, the small blind is still the small blind, and the big blind is still the big blind. And also here we're playing the equivalent of NL100 you know, in a no limit setting, but this is fixed limit. So what this would be is a fixed limit hold'em 1-2 table. That means that the small bet in fixed limit, i.e. the big blind, is 1, and the big bet is then 2. So on the turn in the river, you're betting two units of $2 on the pre-flop and uh, flop. Then you're betting units of one. It's yeah, pretty standard for all fixed limit play. And that's you know either with or without antis. Good. The two bet is, as always, just the first raise. Okay, And in fixed limit, you can only double the big blind, so it's two. <laughs> uh, Re-raise is in the three bet. And the four bet is, of course, in the re-re-raise for four. And in fixed limit games, normally there isn't a, a five bet that's allowed. That means that normally there's a three raise limit up to four small bets, say, four big blinds. And yeah, that's how that would look. If you were to include the five bet, you would just yeah throw that down here and everything else updates respectively. So for the big blind poster, he is calling here a two bet. So the first raise. So this initial two. For the initial raiser, he is then calling again a three bet. The guy who re-raised, if he gets four bet, is going to be calling a four bet here. And these are the respective equities that they need to make that call and break even in the long run. Very good. Or if they're not going all in, which they probably won't be in fixed limit, um, this is the probability they need of hitting a profitable or playable flop. Fold equity, as you guys see here in red, is again restated uh, the probability you need your opponents to fold in order to break even when you're on a bluff. So here, if you make this two bet raise, let's say you, you steal from the, from the button, you make an open raise to two, and you only have the blinds behind you. You need them to fold 36% of the time in order to make that uh, profitable play in the long run but you know you just see how the math works here in fixed limit hold'em guys there's almost no fold equity so that means don't be running bluffs in fixed limit games especially not at the low and middle limits it just is never gonna happen I mean or rarely 
Now let's say there are no antis. You're just playing uh, fixed limit hold'em one two without antis. And now, you know the the poster, the big blind poster needs 22% to make that two bet call. That's a good general overview, I think, um, for what you'll see here. And again, if that's not clear to you guys, definitely see the uh, videos again on bet types, moves, and pot manipulation. We went into great detail on that. Um, the excerpts are also already posted uh, on YouTube. So, yeah, that being said, guys, we'll put the antis back in there just for fun and see how this works out um, with different scenarios. So, let's say we get one open limper and uh, let's say we get two open limpers. So, when you make that two bet, the two bet uh, raise here, you know, you can't, as, as opposed to a pot limit or a no limit game, you can't raise that up to, you know, uh, three times or four times the action before you plus one per caller. That no longer applies here. The maximum you can, you can raise is just one big, uh, one big blind. So, yeah, i.e. to two, and all of these guys before you are, you know, they basically can call you one time at nine, one time at eight, and still break even. So again, no fold equity and fixed limit guys, just let that one sink in. Uh, bet it when you got it, and yeah, that's probably the best way to approach, especially the small and middle stakes when you're playing fixed limit. So very good. Uh, let's take the antis out and see how that changes, you know, no big deal. Um, I think for a hold'em, we'll leave the antis out because that's just more, uh, it's a bit more standard. Um, so let's say we get one limper, one razor, one cold caller. And this guy then makes his three bet to three. Very good. So now everybody's calling three bets, and here it is. You know the small blind still only only needs 20%, 21% equity to make that call, which is basically one time in five. <laughs> I mean that's that's enormous. Um, he's going to be calling a lot as he should. The big blind only needs 17% here, and yeah, he's going to be calling even more all the way down the line. The open razor um, only needs uh, yeah nine and a half percent as well as a cold caller down the line. So let's say he raises it up to three, and we do get a four bet here. So everybody's not calling four bets, and again, you see here the difference in equity is just not that much. Um, or needed equity, and yeah, there you go, twenty percent here again uh, to call that four bet. 18 for the initial uh, big blind poster and the limper. Only 13% for the open raiser. Only 7% for the re raiser. And if you're making this four bet as a pre flop bluff, you need all of these guys to fold 30% of the time. So basically, forget about it. It's never going to happen. <laughs> so, yeah, four bet, four betting and three, three betting, four betting light is is useful in, in different contexts, but especially with your speculative hands in multi-way pots in order to build up that pot pre-flop and string people along all the way. So, you know, making this move with, um, I mean, also cold calling is fine. Um, you know, seeing what flops. Cold calling with pocket pairs, uh, suited connectors, especially late, suited aces, really, really, um, Playable hands, especially in fixed limit, especially when you're late uh, against multiple, yeah, multiple limpers, and especially on passive tables. And the reason for that is, of course, as you just saw, um, that everybody's going to be calling a lot. Okay, that is pretty much all I wanted to look at here for fixed limit um, hold'em. And yeah, again, you guys have access to this. Winnerweek.com um, is the website. All the members. Uh, this is one of the calculators that I provide for free. Uh, it's all of our members, all of our people. And you guys can play with this a bit, you know, basically updating the this basically, yeah, this one column. And just see, you know, what your respective equities are and what the respective fold equity is that you need uh, when making yeah, different different moves. Alright, so seven stud bet sizing. It's a bit different. Um, there's almost always an ante and seven studs, so we'll leave that ante in there for sure. And as you guys saw in the uh, session recordings, there's an option to either bring it in or complete based on, let's take the seven stud high example. 
which we'll be looking at in much greater detail here shortly. Um, yeah, it was, um, I believe, a 1-2 table as well, which actually fits with our little example here. And the antes were 20 cents, so basically 10% of the big bet. All right, we were eight-handed, and it was 160 in antes, right, before the round started. And then the initial player could either complete or just bring it in for basically 25% of the small bet. And so you've got two options here. In seven stud, you can either make it the, the complete or the bring in. So I've let this I've left this kind of open for you guys. You can just enter whatever whatever your plan. We're gonna stick with our one two example. If he brings it in, it's um it's only twenty five cents. If he completes, he basically makes the small bet for one. Yeah, and that's that's how that works out. Um that would then be for Example purposes are one bet, let's call it, and this would then be the two bet, which would be raised up to two. Okay, we'll just look at a few examples here where we have a complete one limper, and this guy decides to raise it up. What does that look like concerning the equities? So your initial comp uh, bring in player and your limper only need 20% to make that call when you raise it up. That means, guess what? You're going to get cold a lot. Uh, at least one time in five, and more than likely at the small and uh, middle stakes, much, much more. So let's say you raise it up then to one. You get one cold caller behind you. And there's a guy behind you who then raises it up to two. He makes a re-raise. And your needed equity to make that call, calling a three bet, is only 14%. <laughs> So again, you will also be calling these re-raises and re-re-raises a lot. Um, and that goes all the way down the line, guys, just like with the other calculator. Um, yeah, and now you're calling, let's see here, this guy, let's say you do get a 4-bet. And now you're calling a 4-bet here, and you only need 8% at that point with one 3-bet caller in that scenario. And again, guys, you can play with this as you like. Um, let's back it up maybe and have a look at a scenario where the guy actually does bring it in to one. And then everybody else here raises it up. So this would be the bring in for one bet would be the full small bet. First raise to two. Um, and actually... There you go. Um, yeah, that would be the re-raise. That'd be the re-re-raise, and at this point, that would be the four bet, right? Because it was a complete and not just a bring in, and so this would more than likely not be allowed. All right, um, we'll just leave it in there for example purposes. But um, this is what it looks like when somebody does complete, and there are no limpers, no call callers. It's just raised around, and your initial completer when he's calling that 2-bet, only needs 18% to do so. All right, the initial raiser, i.e. One, <laughs> one small bet, uh, to 2 when he's calling that 3-bet, only needs 11.6% to do so. 3-better when calling a 4-bet, only needs 8% to make that call and break even in the long run. Again, if he's going all in pre-flop, or he only needs that 8% to hit a playable or profitable flop. And that's pretty much always. <laughs> so again, guys, little to no fold equity in fixed limits. Um, speculative hands, especially in hold'em, go way up in value. Uh, when you are playing late um, in multi-way pots, and yeah, this is kind of the idea behind it. Uh, again, yeah, pre-flop betting calculator with the respective break-even equities and fold equities, both for uh, Texas Hold'em and 7-stud fixed limit.